Columbine Survivor. Columbine Survivor says mission trip to Africa helped him let go of his anger. Interesting. Orange founder and CEO resigned over inappropriate relationship. Shocking. 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 Satanists can't be a part of school. Oh, I want to. I would like to read uh, this. All right, let's see. Yeah, if uh, if you're watching this later, if this is a recording for you, I'm about to put a link in the uh, as the pinned comment in the live chat. You can join Discord that way. We have a lovely group of people who are very smart and talk about things that are above my head, but very interesting stuff. So if you're into that kind of thing, I would recommend you join. There is a link there. There's also a link in the description of the video. And then, cool. DeSantis says Satanists can't be a part of school chaplain program. Satanic Temple responds. Go away. The co-founder of the Satanic Temple has challenged Florida Governor DeSantis to debate to a debate on religious freedom in America after the governor said this week that this that Satanists can't be a part of a recently approved chaplains program for public schools. I would like to see what is the what is the actual definition of a chaplain because I think it crosses religious borders. Oh shocking, there's a frame rate issue. No, that's not that bad. Figure it out. Figure it out. You're good. Maybe I shouldn't have put that stuff in the title. Maybe that wasn't that wise. Chaplain is a member of the clergy attached to a private chapel institution ship branch of the armed forces, etc. The DeSantis signed House Bill. 931 into law on Thursday, allowing school districts and charter schools to, quote, adopt a policy to authorize volunteer school chaplains to provide support, service, and programs to students as assigned by the district school board or charter school governing board. The law takes first July, the law takes effect July 1st. Some have said that if you do a school chaplain program, that somehow you're going to have Satanists running around in all our schools. We're not paying the playing those games in Florida. That is not a religion that is not qualified to be able to participate in this. So we're going to be using common sense when it comes to this. You don't have to worry about it. Interesting. The co-founder of the Satanic Temple, which oversees after-school Satan clubs and plan to take advantage of the law, argued in a series of social media posts summarizing his comments to the media that DeSantis' words hold no authority because the U.S. Constitution guarantees equal treatment under the law. The group has threatened to sue if its members were prohibited from participating in the chaplain program. I find that kind of interesting. Because it's not a religion. Never been a religion. Luciferianism is. Interesting. What seems to be the problem here? Yeah, you're fine. Why are you tweaking out? Grief stress DeSantis invited satanic chaplains into public schools, whether he likes it or not, because he is not at liberty to amend the Constitution by fiat. He also knows that Satanic Temple is recognized by the IRS as a tax exempt religious organization, which is ridiculous. If a public school district or charter school is foolish enough to believe him, they're in for a hell of a battle. If and when that happens, DeSantis is not going to have their backs. We believe that a public debate would provide an excellent platform to thoroughly discuss the principles of religious freedom in America. I would love to see DeSantis debate the, who was he? The co-founder of the Satanic Temple, Reeves. What a phenomenal piece of media that would be. 
why <laughs> Thing. I think as soon as we get in the middle of defining what a religion is and what it is not and whether or not someone can be available and be on a list, we start to run into constitutional problems. Standards for any local policy must include schools informing all parents about the program requiring written parental consent before a student participates in or receives support services and programs provided by a volunteer school chaplain. I'd like to read the actual law. What is the law? House Bill 931. Each school district or charter school may adopt a policy to authorize volunteer school chaplains to provide support services and programs to students as assigned by the district, school board, or charter, school governing authority, blah, 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 blah. Principals of schools with a volunteer school chaplain inform all parents of the availability of such support services and programs. So it's just, it's a very, oh God, it's very short. So it's just introducing a chaplain program to schools. Any school district that adopts a volunteer school chaplain policy must be published the list of volunteer school chaplains, including any religious affiliation on the school district or charter school's website. Background screening required. He's probably in trouble on this one. I think you have to let the Satanists in. The federal government acknowledges them as a religion. I don't see how you get around that. Support services and programs. But yeah, and they already have after school programs. I think DeSantis is screwed on this one. Interesting nonetheless. Huh. God, some of the stuff that goes on this website is awesome. What has DeSantis even been doing since he dropped out of the presidential election? The dude has been quiet. TikTok, you got to go to YouTube. You're not going to be able to see anything. You're welcome to just sit there and stare at me, though. It's just probably not going to be very entertaining. I'm very confused about the Israel thing right now with Iran. There seems to be no... No... Uh, verifiable information one way or the other on anything that's happening. Lots of bombings, but then the bombs don't hit anything. Well, actually, none of them even made it. None of them made it to Israel. None of them made it to Iran. Oh, but wait, 10% made it. Oh, wait, six of them made it. But no, none of them made it. This is the most, like, clouded war reporting I think I've probably ever seen. Iraq was more transparent. Afghanistan was more transparent than this. This has been really weird. I'm probably going to get kicked off YouTube. Just heads up. Yeah. Getting warnings out the ass. Perhaps I should not have put what I put in the title. Made a comment about how I heard that we launched an attack on Iran and someone else said they didn't hear anything about it. It's hard to find info. It's, it's, yes, it's easy to find info on on X, but it's impossible to find information that corroborates other information. I've got a bond, like we'll go through some tonight, but it's, I just don't trust any of it. The, the Russia Ukraine thing, I feel like I had a good grip on what to trust and what not to trust. And there was a lot of corroborating reporting. I don't feel that way with this one. This is the most out of the loop I think I've ever felt during war. It's really hard to, to really understand what's going on. Honestly, they both seem just god awful. They both seem like they're doing just absolutely terrible things. And I think more than even Ukraine, and I say this ignorantly because I don't know enough, but from what I've been able to gather, I think this is the war that we should not have anything to do with more than any other war. The Ukraine thing, I think, isn't even comparable. But perhaps it is. I'm ignorant. I don't know. 
but everything that I'm seeing from both sides here with Israel, like I'm not. It doesn't look good. Doesn't feel good. Feels like atrocities are being committed on both sides. I guess reliable info is what I really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's really hard. It's report after report after report. But finding anything that's like, oh, that makes sense. And here's a corroborating report from, you know, a uh, uh, media organization in Israel. And then that is corroborated by the EU and then Ashra. And it just, there's none of that. He was completely just twisted and wild. YouTube keeps cutting in and out. I don't know how long this is going to last. Now, I don't know if you knew, but we are going to do movie night. So, can I see if you voted actually? Yeah, I can. Oh, man. We're watching the CIA movie, apparently. Eight votes and seven out of eight are for did the CIA discover the spirit world? That should be good. That was a good video. I thought it was a good video. All right, I'm going to record this because it's probably going to get booted. So if it gets booted, Discord's open. Uh, it's going to be a dead night, though. So, Nat, bail anytime you want. I'll record this if, if anybody cares to go back and look. But honestly, it's all the same crap. Just brutal, brutal people doing brutal things on a weekly basis. I saw a Discord message flying around, but was on vacation. Nice. Good for you. Good. For you. That's a beautiful thing. Democrats versus Republicans in Congress. That's pretty accurate. You see the internet stuff like clown world, this and clown world that. I think Congress is the ultimate clown world. And it is truly both, both sides. It's not red versus blue. It's the state versus you. That's well said. Yeah, I mean, they're one and the same. The wiretapping thing they did last week. 86 Republicans voted for that. Voted for the government to be able to wiretap us without a warrant. U.S. citizens. The Republicans are just as bad. It's a lesser of two evil thing, I suppose. But they're both god-awful. They're both absolute evil incarnate. This, this is interesting. So this says they literally want you dead. And this is Nate McMurray, who will actually, let's look right now. So this is Nate McMurray, U.S. congressional candidate for New York, healthcare as a human right, so communism, essentially, ban assault weapons, which logically doesn't make sense because I guarantee he's talking about like automatic rifles and doesn't understand what an assault weapon is. Fight MAGA. Fight MAGA is a part of your description. This is Congress. So this is what I'm saying. This is clown world. If Congress in their Twitter bio, it says healthcare is a human right, ban assault weapons, two stupid as hell things already, but then it says fight MAGA. You're in Congress, dude, you wear a tie. You are supposed to be something. You're supposed to be the image of something. It's supposed to mean something. It says bubble up, build WNY. So Nate McMurray posted a an X, he X'd an X that says, Slava Ukraine, die MAGA, die, you lose. That's Congress. That's alarming. Uh, Ian Mao Chong said, 
They literally want you dead. I don't necessarily think that's true, but I think it's really alarming nonetheless. It's an alarming thing to say coming out of, of Congress, even if you're not technically in Congress. Somebody who's, who's a congressional candidate but says die MAGA die and has fight MAGA in his Twitter bio, shouldn't Congress be at least like pretending to be geared towards unity? Shouldn't it at least be the image that they, they project out for America so that we can very dilutedly believe that there is some kind of unity at the level of the state so that we can get behind them and that the only disagreements are really, they're really non-essential things and that's what we're voting for. But at the end of the day, the government is good and the government has our back and Congress is good and, and the Senate is good. Die, MAGA, die. That's wild. Someone's making their entire personality platform against someone who's not got it cuts off, who's the stupid heart in the YouTube chat, cuts off the last word for everybody, and I have no freaking idea how to fix it. Someone wins, wills, who's, who's, against someone who's no longer in office is wild. Yeah, it's crazy, because MAGA was like Trump. We hate Trump, we hate Trump. And then Trump was kind of out of the picture. So now it's like, no, we hate you, actually. We hate you. We hate anybody who backs Trump. You are evil because you back Trump. And we hate you. And there's some crazy stuff having to do with the guy who lit himself on fire that we'll get to. But the, the political environment around that whole thing, crazy. Because the media is portraying the dude as like a, a right-wing Trump extremist. And if you scrape the internet, the dude was wildly left wing. He was very, very liberal, uh, like with absolute proof and receipts that he was liberal. And people are still buying it. People are losing their minds that this right wing extremist lit himself on fire outside of Trump's trial. The U.S. House passes $95 billion to Ukraine. Israel aid package sends to Senate, Washington, April 20th. That's today, baby. The U.S. House of Representatives on Saturday, with a broad bipartisan support, passed a $95 billion legislative package providing security assistance to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan over bitter objections from Republican hardliners. No shit. No shit. $95 billion to other countries' security when our security has completely disappeared. It doesn't exist. The police are overrun. They need help bad. They deserve help bad. The border is an absolute atrocity. Like the country is literally, if you've seen videos of Oakland recently, Oakland looks like a third world country. It's crazy. Oakland is gone. But let's send a hundred billion dollars. Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. I hope they break down the numbers because the amount that went to Ukraine in proportion to Israel and Taiwan is absolutely crazy. <laughs> the legislation now proceeds to the Democratic majority Senate, which passed a similar measure more than two months ago. U.S. leaders with from Democratic President Joe Biden to top Senate Republican Mitch McConnell have been urging and battled Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson to bring it up for a vote. Mike Johnson's has been absolutely captured by the deep state. As of the past maybe 30 days, I didn't used to mind Mike Johnson. He's, I don't know what room he got dragged into. I don't know what conversation they had with him, but he is a different human being as of recently, and it is so obvious. It's so easy to tell, and just nobody's saying anything about it. The Senate is set to begin considering the House passed bill on Tuesday with some preliminary votes that afternoon. Final passage was expected sometime next week, which would clear the way for Biden to sign it into law. Here it is. The bill provides 60, 60 billion to address the conflict in Ukraine. So 60 billion to protect the border of Ukraine. 23 billion to replenish U.S. weapons Stocks and facilities, $26 billion for Israel, uh, $9 billion for humanitarian needs, as well as $8 billion for the Indo-Pacific, including Taiwan. 
Vladimir Zelensky expresses thanks, saying U.S. lawmakers move to keep history on the right track. Thanks for the money. You guys are keeping history on the right track, U.S. I would die if I, if I, the embarrassment I would feel if I was alive 100 years from now, when all of this has blown over, World War III has happened, it's gone, and there's actual history being written about this as the Third World War. I'd be so embarrassed. I'd be so embarrassed. Can't even imagine having to live through that embarrassment because it is, it is atrocious. It's absolutely atrocious. Something more fun. Uh, zombies. Zombie disease kills first two humans. Research in Texas suggests the first Americans to die from zombie deer. Disease, a.k.a. chronic wasting disease. Consumed infected venison. So they killed some deer, they ate the deer, and the deer had zombie disease, zombie deer disease. The disease causes deer to act confused, drool, and lose fear of humans. It's actually kind of terrifying. Humans showed symptoms of sudden confusion, aggression, and seizures. So, like, basically actually a zombie. 24 cases have been reported in North Carolina, with the two hunters exhibiting severe symptoms after eating the deer meat before dying. A study in the Neurology Journal points out the lethal risks of chronic wasting disease. Nearly 100% fatal, which is also kind of terrifying, raising fears of its spread to humans. I didn't think this was real. It's for real. It's a real thing. It's kind of scary. It's kind of really actually pretty scary. Chronic wasting disease is what it's mostly called. Oh, that's unfortunate. They deleted the post. That's okay. We'll find it. Here it is. Trudeau, the lovely and beautiful Trudeau. Uh, government proposes more taxes on wealthy Canadians to fund housing. Communism. Canada on Tuesday revealed a new tax on wealthy individuals that will bring in billions of dollars over the next five years to help fund housing programs designed to win over a disgruntled voter base. They're disgruntled because it is turning into a communist state. In its annual federal budget, the liberal government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau also said that despite the increase in spending, the budget deficit for 2023-24 would remain stable before gradually falling. Government had already outlined its housing project, I'm sorry, its housing plans in the weeks running up to the budget release with the main new element, an increase in capital gains tax, taxing the rich to pay for housing for people who are probably not working. Am I crazy or has Trudeau been PM for a really long time? I assume he's been a PM forever. He is the new, uh, I don't, what is the term? I think it's four years. I think it's four years. So it says, of course, they're not going to give an easy answer. There is no limit to the amount of time. I did not know that. I'm so glad you asked that question. I had no idea. So there is no limit to the amount of time that somebody can be a prime minister. The prime minister is the leader of the party or coalition of parties with the support of the majority of members of the House of Representatives. The prime minister would lose their position if their party votes to change the leadership of the party. Their party does not win government at a federal election. They lose their own seat at a federal election or they decide to resign as prime minister. So that makes a lot more sense. The Duke can be there forever. Yeah, because he's been there for a while. I feel like he's been there at least six years. That was a great question. I'm really glad you asked that. I learned something new today. Yikes, so I'm only a little crazy. What year did he take office? Trudeau took office in 2015. Wow, that can't be true. Is that true? Yeah, Prime Minister of Canada since 2015 and the leader of the Liberal Party since 2013. So we're talking damn near 10 years. 
Wow. That's horrific. Yeah, I I did not know that. I'm really glad you asked that. I feel like that's something I should have known. I guess I just never really thought about it that hard. What a what a what a <laughs> wild thing to know now. Ten years. No wonder Canada's gotten so bad. So bad. If Biden was in for ten years, it makes sense. We would be in a very similar position. He's only had four years and he's done a damn good job. Of ruining absolutely everything but we're not completely in collapse yet i suppose so what's trudeau doing the wealthy who tend to earn rel relatively more income from capital gains disproportionately benefit compared to the middle class the thing is though there's no way this goes through the middle class it's the it's they're trying to create that divide between the wealthy and the absolute and absolute poverty under the new measure, people realizing capital gains of more than 250000 or 180000 USD will pay tax on the excess at a rate of 66. Holy shh. That's crazy. So, if you're realizing capital gains, you will pay tax at a rate of 66.7% when it used to be 50%. Similarly, all capital gains realized by companies and trusts will be taxed 66.7%. That's insane. And that's gonna be really rough on the economy. That's gonna be really rough on the economy. Businesses especially, they're not planning on that. That's a big increase, 16%, more than 16% increase in tax on capital gains is going to be a draw on the economy in Canada. That's a big deal. Jesus. That's wild. I see that coming though. Biden's all about the pay your fair share, right? That's coming here. Capital gains tax sucks. This is Christian. He is a 16 year old student at a school. He was suspended for three days after using the term illegal alien in an English assignment because it's quote offensive and quote disrespectful. Now his record could be damaged. Please support this based student. I didn't read that before. Please support this base student by helping to raise awareness to his story. So this was interesting. Students suspended for using term illegal alien in English class. Uh, I, I heard something. Elon Musk said this is absurd. I heard something. Uh, in addition to the three-day suspension, his record could be damaged as he aims to secure an athletic scholarship for college. He's actively involved in school clubs, track, and cross country. Yeah, this is sad. This is sad because especially somebody who's going for sports, like going for scholarships, and is trying to become something in the academic world, even from an athletic standpoint, this type of thing is it's a significant blemish on his record. And all for what? Saying exactly what the truth is? Illegal. If you don't like the term, cool, that's fine. You can dislike something without ruining a kid's life. Illegal alien is the actual term up until recently, just like a recession had an actual definition until we changed it in 2022. Things mean things. You don't have to like them. They don't have to feel good. You don't have to agree with it, but it's what it is. Illegal aliens. It's the accurate description. And now this kid, look at this cute kid. He's cute, like young kid, just trying to become an athletic star, a superstar. And now he's gonna get completely wrecked. But probably not, honestly. I think people are being loud enough. And I heard the mom talk. Uh, I don't know if it was on the news or a live or something with somebody. But she's working on it. So I think with how big these stories get, it'll probably go well. Because I don't know if you remember, but there was a Kansas City Chiefs game. There's a nine-year-old kid who got dragged through the media for weeks because he painted half his face black and half his face red, which are the colors of the Kansas City Chiefs. He was at a Kansas City Chiefs game. He had a jersey on. He had the headdressing on. He was rah, 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 Kansas City Chiefs. He got dragged through the media, a nine-year-old, a nine-year-old kid. Finally, they sued the media, and they're winning. So some things end well. Yeah, good for that mama. But it's crazy, like, kids aren't even safe. The children are not even safe. That's really sad. It's very, very sad.
Oh, yeah, I remember that. Then it took months to declare that kid is innocent. It took a year. I'm pretty sure that was 2022, actually. So almost two years to go through the legal process and have the kid redeemed. But after he'd already been completely dragged through the media for well over a year for sure. But I think it, it edged on two years. I could be wrong, but it was, it was over a year for sure. Uh, UAE, Kat, this is what I was talking about the other day. Cloud seeding slash geoengineering control room. You've seen the flood in Dubai's airport and other weird climate phenomena in the Middle East. This is your human man-made climate change right here. If you don't think the West is conducting similar activities, you're very naive. Uh, okay. Just so I know, I have to drive back from Abu Dhabi to Dubai. Uh, no. It's not raining. It's a sunny day. The UAE government invested more than $20 million in research to start a process called cloud seeding. The UAE performs around 1,000 hours of cloud seeding a year, and it's all controlled by this building in the National Center of Meteorology in Abu Dhabi, where they track the whole process. We met with a cloud seeding expert to explain how the seeding process works. We wait the forecast when we have a good you know, chance for, uh, for a cloud. We send the aircraft to that location. It go under the cloud in the first stage of the cloud. There is good updraft at that time. Start to release all the salt and with the good updraft, of course, it will go inside the cloud. Uh, the droplets will become bigger and start to uh, rain. The center manufactures a salt substance that helps enhance rainfall. They put them in what they call flares. So cloud seeding geoengineering in Dubai. In other news, record rainfall in Dubai. Blame climate change, not cloud seeding. Really interesting how that works. So this was from April 16th, and this report is from the 17th. So one day later, one day later, after an admission of playing God with the weather, the initial reports from Bloomberg, I believe it was Bloomberg, I could be wrong, but I'm almost sure it was Bloomberg. They talked about cloud seeding. If not Bloomberg, there were other reports from mainstream media in the United States mentioning cloud seeding. And then not a day later, you see all of these titles changing, all of them changing to climate change. And then some of them, like this one from Bloomberg, blame climate change, not cloud seeding. And I think honestly, the only reason they put cloud seeding in this one is because they know they're going to get more clicks that way. And that's, all, that's, the, that's how they make money. So climate change, they get to have the, the scapegoat but keeping cloud seeding in the title gets them more clicks and they make more money, especially when some of the other media channels are not leaving that in there. But isn't that absolutely wild? It's so crazy. One day later, just pretending like none of it's happening. All it takes is a day. Oh God, this was wrong. Waiting for them to point the gun at me so I can show everybody that I won't die when I take every bullet in that clip to wherever in my body they shoot it, and then I will kill every man on this plane. So where are they? Where's Homeland Security? Pull the gun. Pull the gun. Where are they? You don't have Homeland Security. You're not gonna try. You're not gonna try and stop me, then, Mom. Why are you scared? Why should you be scared when you have God's 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 Well, tell them to bring SWAT to shoot me down because they're going to have to shoot me down today. Remember that. Where are they diverting us? Because wherever it is, there's going to be a bloodbath everywhere. You can run away. You can all run away if you want. If you're men, you can run. I won't kill you. My fault is armed. You can put up your hands and say, don't kill me then, or don't you know over this All right, so he basically just keeps doing this. He gets up out of his seat. He starts walking towards the front of the plane. And then he attacks a flight attendant. So the flight attendant gets hit by him. And then it was really nice to see a whole gaggle of dudes stood up out of their chair, finally, and went and subdued him. A little bit frustrating that nobody grabbed his ass after he talked about killing people and just, you know, pin him down. But, but at least they eventually, when they saw him attack a woman, it took attacking a woman to do it. But on the other hand, I kind of get it. Nowadays, you can't, you can't really just defend people anymore. You have to kind of wait for something to happen because even if something happened, you're probably still going to go to jail. Unfortunately. 
What? No, the beard. Oh, I shaved. Yeah, one, you don't get to talk garbage about the shaving the beard when you are not here. Very late. Very late. So no, no word from the peanut gallery. But uh, also, give me three days and I'll be back. You know, I honestly just messed it up when I was shaving the sides. To be completely honest, being I'm being very vulnerable with you right now. I, I, I effed it up when I was doing the sides. So I'm like, ah, eh, it's been a while since I've shaved. So I just take it off. Kat's been talking about wanting to see my face for a while. So get that sinner, Joe. We'll see. Because I, I was enjoying the beard. Yeah, I know. Dude, you're, you're totally good. You have a life. And I'm very glad that you do. Spend, uh, spend good time with family. It's a hell of a lot more important than this garbage. Oh, shoot. But it's good to see you. Uh, so now for the best part, and I have to be careful because I can't actually show this. So this was probably the most wild thing of the week. A protester on fire was handing out leaflets about Trump and Biden. So warning, graphic video content. I cannot play this on YouTube because I'm afraid. But I will play it in Discord if we do the after show in Discord here in like 20 minutes. So before setting himself on fire, he was seen handing out leaflets about Trump and Biden. Then he poured gas over himself and lit it alight. Is that grammatically correct? Poured gas over himself and lit it alight. There's no way that's proper. He poured gas over himself and then lit it. Or and then lit himself. Or ignited. Ignited. Over himself and then ignited it. That's what it should say. That's a really weird way to write that. Eyewitness. Quote, he made a noise and he threw all those pamphlets. I don't know if the cops will ever release that, but those pamphlets have the answer of whatever the hell convinced him to kill himself. Emergency services quickly extinguished the flames and took him to hospital. They took him to hospital. It's unclear what his condition is at present. So that's one. Manifesto of the man who lit himself on fire outside of Trump trial. The protester who set himself on fire was distributing pamphlets titled, quote, the true history of the world, end quote, and the published an online manifesto where he explained why he was taking such an extreme act. He said this, my name is Max Azarello, and I am an investigative researcher who has set himself on fire outside of the Trump trial in Manhattan. This extreme act of protest is to draw attention to an urgent and important discovery. We are victims of a totalitarian con, and our own government, along with many of their allies, is about to hit us with an apocalyptic fascist world coup. It's a bit doom and gloom there, Maxi boy. Now, this gets deeper. This gets deeper. So, on mainstream media, he's been, from what I have seen so far, He's been called a right-wing extremist. He's being attributed to Trump. He's a crazy Trump person. So here are some Reddit posts about that. This user said, my God, this one clip is perfect encapsulation of everything that is wrong with America right now. Trump and his cult-like followers immolating themselves over him. The media reporting on it like it's a sports event and first mistaking it for a mass shooting, no less, because that is definitely the kind of normal that makes up a healthy society. I mean, what else can you say at this point? The emperor has no clothes. So it's being, he's being called a right-wing person. He's being called a Trump person. So just wait. For those who still deny that MAGA is a cult. Again, attributing Trump and MAGA to this guy who lit himself on fire. Next one. This man is not explicitly MAGA. He alleged in his ramblings, nonsensical manifesto, that Trump was in cahoots with Hillary Clinton. He seems to have chosen this venue because he knew the media would cover it. Don't contribute to knee-jerk misinformation. This appears to be a sick conspiracy nut, but not necessarily a MAGA loon dying for Trump. The manifesto is absolutely influenced by QAnon tropes. So he's QAnon then. You can, I, just, I can't identify with people who are like this. I can't understand how people can get in these message boards and do this. It's, it's God, what can you even say? It's people literally, I can't say that on YouTube. It's the peak of brainwashing. I can say that. It's peak brainwashing. It's peak delusion. 
and just being completely captured by an ideology rather than trying to step out and actually understand it. I wouldn't care if this dude was a Trump guy. If he was, he was. If he's a crazy right-wing person, it means nothing to me. He's just a crazy person. And if he's a crazy left-wing person, I also don't care. He's just a crazy person. It doesn't really matter. Both sides are absolutely corrupt to, to, the, to the max. It's just a matter of what will mitigate damage a little bit, a little bit more than the other, in my opinion, at this point. Finally, a Trump supporter with some actual balls, someone else said. So, um, he's not, <laughs> and these are his words. I've never commented in the sub before. I hope this doesn't break the rules. The far right now has its first martyr. And he, I'm sorry, these aren't his words. That's the next one. The far right has its first martyr, and he martyred himself in the service of evil. It doesn't matter what his reasons were or whether he was even aligned with the far right at all. They'll slurp it up. The martyrs inspired mobs to take large-scale direct action. More will follow. I hope I'm overreacting, but I believe that is impossible to overestimate just how serious this is. America is well and truly effed. I live in a town that's in the top five liberal communities in America. We skew a bit too far right in general, in my opinion. But even here, I've seen more and more cars besmeared with Trump bumper stickers, flags, and signs. More and more homes sporting Trump banners. Even protesters clogging freeway overpasses, putting up Trump banners, and yelling treasonous platitudes in unison. I will give this person a hundred dollars if they can give me one picture of that happening. One. Because the, the, the right side of the aisle does not know how to protest. They're god-awful at it. And there's no way. They're, they're under overpasses clogging up the roads because they complain about it. They're not putting banners up at the same time. And they're not yelling treasonous platitudes in unison. One video. One video. I'd love to see it. And then I swear to God, I'll eat my words. The moral gulf between the monk who set himself on fire to protest the Vietnam War and this sad, brainwashed, lost, and desperate peon setting himself on fire in defense of a monster hell-bent on destroying America. I can't wrap my head around it. And this problem cannot be solved by covenantal means, conventional means. I hope this finally motivates on-the-fence Republicans to move back to their old-school values. Even if they stay somewhat right of center, maybe that will help. But I'm not holding my breath. Forgive me. But I'm a lifelong liberal and a staunch anti-gun advocate. Shocking. I will drive to Texas to buy guns using my status as a white male boomer to gain trust, not my words, his words, trust and expedite the purchase. Take that, you effing right-wing mental cases. War is coming. It will be a new modern war where most battles are fought mano a mano, and I will defend my family. That's a lot. That's a lot. But then there's this. So this user on X scraped Max's Twitter. Max Azarello, the guy who lit himself on fire, he had his Twitter, or I'm sorry, his Reddit scraped. So these are his words. My politics include believing both U.S. parties have been taken over by financial criminals and that the U.S. has been a full-blown secret kleptocracy ever since CIA Director George H. H. W. Bush got the White House. I'm a huge proponent of left unity and believe that only the left has the power to build a unite movement to enact meaningful change. I wish more leftists realized that shouting ACAB and memeing about guillotines and mol <laughs> Molotovs is precisely what our criminal government would want them to do. In my eyes, the only thing ACAB stands for is all cops are brainwashed. I worship Mother Earth magazine to the high heavens. So he's obviously just not well, right? He wasn't well. He was not a well person. I don't think he was left, but I also don't think he was right. There was another picture of the back of his car. He, he did write like in marker on the back of his car, somehow trying to connect Hillary Clinton to Trump. So he's not a Trump guy. He thinks Trump is evil. But whenever, whenever they get the chance to try to tie this stuff into something, to make some kind of connection and besmirch like the right wing or the Republicans, it becomes this. And the worst is that Reddit just breeds this. 
I never see anywhere on the internet things like I see on Reddit. And that's kind of saying something because X is pretty wild. But it, it does not even compare to Reddit. It does not even compare. But crazy stuff with this whole guy. It ran way deeper than I ever would have thought. It got pretty, uh, pretty crazy there. Hey, my name's Sean. Oh, good God. All right, hold on one second. Hold on one second. USDA and Chinese CCP laboratories collaborated on $1 million project creating lethal bird flu viruses. We talked about this, I think, a week or two ago, uh, but funded by the taxpayer dollars. Paying attention now? Question mark. Lawmakers are seeking explanations following revelation that the U.S. funding a project at a Chinese military lab aimed at enhancing the lethality of bird flu viruses to humans. Interesting, especially because they're starting to break out. Uh, bird flu has hit in Texas, I believe. 18 congressional members have questioned the Department of Agriculture, USDA, regarding this initiative, which is initially reported by Daily Mail. This project is part of a $1 million partnership between the USDA and the Chinese Academy of Science, which manages the Wuhan laboratory implicated in theories about the COVID theories? Theories? Which manage the Wuhan laboratory implicated in theories about the COVID lab leak. Did we learn nothing? Did we learn nothing and do they just genuinely not care? You know, I heard Tucker Carlson talking about this. He was on Joe Rogan's show uh, the other day. And they were talking about how back in the day, uh, politicians would lie to you, but they lie in like a, in a, in a believable way. So you didn't necessarily know you were being lied to. Now they don't even try to cover it up. They just, they just lie. It's like a kid lying, like a, a like a five-year-old kid saying, you know, I, I work at Boeing, you know, I, I make a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's like, it's, there's no possible way what you're telling is the truth, but you just continue to do it. That's what I feel like nowadays. I feel like when the government talks, it's a five-year-old telling me that they are the COO at Boeing and they make $100 million a year. There's like no effort anymore. It felt better when there was effort. I think it felt better. We were just on a plane with our daughter and the idea of this terrifies me. Oh, that video. I'm confident, though, that I have a hubby that would kick that guy's ass, though. At least there's that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. See my comment from above? People who make their own personality being against someone who's no longer in office is still wild. Yeah, it's a crazy concept. Mikhail, the beard is gone. It'll be back. It'll be back. I messed up when I was shaving. It'll be back. Don't worry. New bill for Supreme Court accountability could dissolve the separation of powers. Rep Schiff, along with reps blah, 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 blah. The legislation aims to establish an office of the inspector general within the judicial branch to oversee Supreme Court justices, ensuring they adhere to ethical standards and are protected from undue influence. This is a massive red flag. While aimed at enhancing accountability, critics note that such oversight could challenge the separation of powers, potentially allowing executive influence over it. This is really, really, really problematic. When like the structure of, of like Congress or the structure of how the Senate and the Supreme Court work, when those structures get altered, the implications are catastrophic. And this is one of them, in my opinion, as somebody who's, you know, who the hell am I? Uh, but in my opinion, this is catastrophic. Potentially, the implications are really, really scary. The Supreme Court accountability. That's really bad. That's really, really bad. If there was executive influence over the Supreme Court, like the Supreme Court is there for a reason. It's, it's there, hopefully, to, to be kind of the voice of reason, to, to make these tough calls and really not to have anything pushing or st not have anything weighing down on them. I don't know exactly how to describe what I'm what I'm trying to say, but it's, it's really problematic. If there were, if there were a, if, if, if the government was able to 
execute influence over the Supreme Court, like if Biden was able to do that, it would be massively abused. I guess that's the easiest way to say what I'm afraid of with that. It'll be abused, abused, abused. And then the Supreme Court is basically irrelevant because it can just be superseded. That's, that's what I'm afraid of personally, but maybe I'm being a bit dramatic about it, but it makes me nervous. British police turn up at Christian man's house with a psychologist because, quote, there was a report about beliefs being expressed, end quote. Police said this, people have raised concern about your views, that you're concerned about what's going on in Australia. If you don't know, there's been a bunch of really crazy stuff going on in Sydney right now. The man had posted on social media reacting to the Sydney church attack, saying that Christians should stand up. That's what he said. That's all he said. I'm going to send you now. I'll work for you on that, Jay. Yep. Name and number, please, mate. Yeah, PC Green, Echo Bravo 428. I'm Joe, PC Turner, Hastings Police Station. Thank you. So what's this about then? So it was just a few I won't concerns. film it, I'll just get it recorded. Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Um, just a few concerns. It's smelly right now, sorry. It's right. <laughs> He's like a mop, he just picks everything up. <laughs> it's lovely. What's his name? Uh, Klaus. So why are you here today, sorry? No, you, you can all sit down, it's yeah, not a problem. Like You've literally just missed the missus and that. They've gone out yeah. like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So what's the issue? So it was just to, you know, obviously what we've been told, that you might have a few concerns, a few things that are bothering you at the moment. Yeah. Um, whether there's That's anything... bothering everyone else in the country right now. So what are the concerns you're here for? Because this is religious discrimination right now, you know. Because you wouldn't be knocking on Muslims' doors if they had this conversation. Because I already know why you're here. So this is religious... Why, why do you think we're here? I don't know. What's the priest told you? They're just... People have raised concerns. What that, concerns? About your views. What views? Whether, that you've got concerns about what's going on in Australia. Yeah, so I'm an I'm a Orthodox Christian. Now you've turned up at my house because I went and see my priest. So I'm going to get you all on film because this is going straight to my solicitor. So what is, what are your concerns? Is there anything that we can help with? No, firstly, I don't mean any disrespect to any of you. I don't want to sound abrupt here if you can tell me why you're here. So, so I think as PC Sam's explained, um, so there was a report about some beliefs being expressed. So the reason I'm here is I work for the NHS, and if you're willing, I'm happy to talk and listen with you no, that's about fine. if you've got any concerns about your well-being. No, I'm fine. Um, I'm so fine. Find it. Klaus, out. Sorry. Uh -huh. oh, no, because he's just jarring otherwise. You can sit down, mate. No, no, so, so my understanding is, now I'm not a police officer, I'm a nurse, so my understanding is... So because I've questioned about the church not acting on the behalf of Christians, you're now turning up here with mental health nurses, assuming that I'm some right wing nutter. So no one assumes anything. Can right. I explain my point of view? And you're happy, I'm happy to... No, no, that's fine, so, because I... I, I... So he voiced concerns about the terror attack, which is this right here. So, teenager charged with terrorism over Australia church stabbing attack. A 16-year-old Australian boy has been charged with committing a terrorist act. Police said over the stabbing of an Assyrian church bishop in Western Sydney during live stream service. The teenage suspect was taken to hospital following the attack on Bishop Mar Marie Emmanuel and was charged in the children's court on Friday morning. And the guy made a post saying he was concerned and saying that Christians should stand up, which I assume in a moral sense, he's saying Christians should stand up for morality, for what is right, for what is real. And so police show up with a psychiatrist or a psychologist is what it says. He called himself a nurse but a nurse isn't, it doesn't make any sense. So I assume that's just what Australia calls them. But a psychologist to go talk to him about his mental well-being, which is crazy. And it's, it's not an isolated incident. We've looked at a few of these over the past two months. Uh, one was in the EU, and now one was in Australia, of this happening because of social media posts. What I find interesting is those Reddit posts I was just reading through where somebody made a direct threat and said they were going to go buy firearms and stuff. And nobody cares about that. But if, some, if somebody said Christians should stand up, they get a home visit from the government. 
and a psychiatrist or psychologist. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. It's one of those things like it feels like just the beginning of something that is going to progressively get worse and worse and worse, more uncomfortable and more uncomfortable, more stepping over a line each time. I hope I'm wrong, but it doesn't feel right. This was really good. I think if you like Tucker Carlson or even if you don't, I recommend watching it. I find it really hard not to like Tucker Carlson because he just seems like a really genuine guy. Pretty much all the time. I don't agree with everything he says. I'm not on the same page with him as him on yep. everything. But he makes good content and he covers things that other people don't want to. So Tucker Carlson tells Joe Rogan, U.S. servicemen have died as a result of being in contact with UFOs. Says he thinks aliens are spiritual phenomena. Yeah, I'm not going to play the whole thing and I'm not going to talk too long about it. But... You should go watch this. It was the Joe Rogan experience, which now, in case you don't know, is on YouTube again. Joe Rogan's podcast is now on YouTube again. You mean the movie 1984? They were talking about George Orwell. Uh, but yes, because I know that's what you're talking about. And yes, agreed. This was really good, though. They talked about aliens for a while. They talked about spirituality. Tucker Carlson kept taking it the Christian route, bringing up scripture, bringing up. Uh, you know, the battle between good and evil. Joe Rogan kept trying to take it more of a secular route. And uh, it was good. It was good the way that they offset each other. And uh, it was just, it was an interesting conversation. But he said some pretty interesting stuff. So U.S. servicemen have died as a result of contact with or being in the proximity of these vehicles uh, in reference to UFOs. The prophet Ezekiel writes about it in the first chapter, Wheels in the Sky. These are spiritual phenomena. There's no evidence they're from another planet. The atmosphere is really well monitored, both for military, for defense reasons, but also because, uh, because, like, it would be nice to know when asteroids are coming. There's no evidence, has never been any evidence, that there are lots of these objects, these vehicles, coming into our atmosphere from somewhere else, some other planet. There is no evidence of that at all. So Tucker Carlson has the, he has the view that we talked about a lot, and I tend to kind of agree with this, is that they're in the ocean. If they're there, they seem to be in the ocean. It was really good, though. It was good. So if you haven't seen that, I highly recommend watching it. It was very interesting. 14-year-old. Oh, God. Yeah, this. So two 14-year-olds charged with first-degree murder. One tried as an adult for the killing of a woman during a 48-hour crime spree involving nine carjackings and two ATM robberies. This was in St. Louis. So this uh, Kay Johnson was parking her car at home when... The two boys, they uh, pulled up behind her in a stolen Nissan sedan. Harris shot her in the face because she was taking too long to get out of the car. She died at the scene, and her 14-year-old daughter was in the car. Horrific. There's really nothing else to say. I just find all of this stuff with kids really sad. And it seems like it's so much more all the time. Just more and more and more of young, like, yo, 14 years old is young to be doing crime at all. But it's extremely young to be taking somebody's life. It's not, it's not, in our society, it's not normal. And even, even throughout human history, honestly, I don't think that's normal. I don't think that's ever really been normal. Definitely happened. There's definitely been, you know, 12 to 14 year old boys who were fighting in wars and taking people's lives, for sure. But in civilized society, and even throughout probably most of history, civilized history, 14-year-old boys are not taking people's lives. It's really sad. Make adult decisions, face adult consequences. But are they capable of making an adult decision? Like, are they capable of really thinking that through? The consequences? What it actually does to the other person's life, their loved ones. Like, I don't think most 14 year olds are capable of that, especially today, because I feel like kids are dumber than they've ever been. But I like they need to face consequences, no doubt. Australian police making it clear residents aren't to share or read information not reported by the police. The police and only the police will be the sole source of truth. Ironic after the whole Christian thing. 
with the police coming to his house. So. I also want to stress that there is misinformation being communicated across social media and people should not share any of that information. The source of information should be from police and law enforcement authorities and if people have concerns they should check our websites, our socials and any other direct news from law enforcement about current information. If we have current credible information about any risk or threat to the community, we will let them know. We will share that with the community. So please be assured that police will be the source of truth and not social media and misinformation. We are the truth. We are the truth. Wild. Here you have uh, Biden talking about <laughs> kids flipping him off. I never thought I'd see a sign when I'm going through a, a, a neighborhood or a, a rural town in, in the West or Senate to see big signs that have a Trump sign in the middle that says F. Biden and having a little kid standing with his middle finger, seven years old, eight years old. Well, I promise it happens all the time. You, I've never. He's saying that seven and eight year olds are flipping him off. This is a tough one, because on one hand, that's probably not true. That's probably like his uncle being eaten by cannibals that he said the other day. Um, on the other hand, I wouldn't be surprised if they were, though. Because, yeah, maybe there's just some base kids who are like, you. So, I get it. So, to piggyback off of that, here's Vice this. President Biden saying that his uncle Bozy was eaten by cannibals. So, you know, I... I answered this question yesterday. Um, I believe I've seen some clips on your on your network about me answering this question. I don't have much to say uh, beyond what I said to some of your colleagues. Uh, look, I was there. I think you traveled with us too to Pennsylvania. I'm not sure if you were there at the memorial uh, in um, in Scranton. The president had a emotional and um, uh. I think a symbolic moment. He had an opportunity as president uh, to honor his uncle's service in uniform. He had an opportunity uh, to be there as president uh, to, to, you know, to speak to the bravery of his uncle, and not just his uncle, but many U.S. service members that put their lives on the line on behalf of his country. So his uncle, who lost his life when the military aircraft he was on crashed in the Pacific after taking off near New Guinea, the, prize, the president highlighted his uncle's story as he made the case for honoring our sacred commitment to equip those we stand we send to war and take care of them and their families when they come home. And as he iterated, the last thing American veterans are, or the last thing Americans are, should be called, are suckers and losers. And uh, and that is those types of words should not come from a commander in chief as we have in the past. And we should actually be lifting up our American veterans and honoring them. And that's what you saw from this president. And where is the answer to the question? Did you guys see it anywhere? Did you see the answer? It's like, where is Waldo? Uh, she is just the worst at her job. She's so bad. Jen Psaki was at least good at her job. She was a terrible, evil demon woman. But damn, was she good at her job. She could make you feel like she answered the question when she did not at all answer the question. She was very good at her job. This lady. I don't know if she could be worse at her job. She makes a fool of herself and of the, the, the literal office of the United States constantly, constantly. It's so embarrassing to watch her try to work these things out in public, getting paid with tax dollars to lie. Not, not even lie, though. She just said stuff. She just said stuff. I guess her first part was a lie, but then she just said stuff. She just started talking. And, and, and just... All you're doing is like, okay, 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 okay. You think I'm going to forget what the question was. We're not going to forget what the question was. But she never answers it. So this just happened. This was pretty good. This is from today. Put those damn flags away. It is a disgrace to display any other flag than the American flag in the House of Chambers. The House will be in order. So if you see, because it took me a minute, I didn't immediately see them. A lot of these... Um, I'll call them idiots, are holding Ukraine flags in their hands 
in the House chamber. So then this happens. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida rise? I said no. The gentlewoman from Florida. He said, put those damn flags away. Then you have this. And this is a good kind of depiction of what is different about the political parties. So you have probably most, if not all, in this video we just played, Republicans who are saying, put those damn flags away, referring to Ukraine flags in the House chamber. Then you had left-wing people, this guy Alex Cole, posted this on Twitter. It says, Republicans, how dare Democrats wave the Ukrainian flag in Congress? Also Republicans. And it has this homeless guy. I don't know who he is. But a homeless-looking man, a hick-looking man, no offense to you, sir, uh, holding the Confederate flag, walking through a government building. So what, what is happening is on the left, they're drawing it as equivalent. So as if seeing the Ukraine flag held by government, government employees, by politicians, by the literal leaders of this country, holding other countries' flags in government buildings, they think that is the same as some random ass dude walking through a government building with a Confederate flag. And wasn't it the Democrats who were really into the Confederate flag at one point in history? I can't remember what point it was. Maybe somebody else knows. But it's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous thing to say. And it shows just how absolutely ignorant some people are. And unfortunately, it seems like most of them are on one side. I wish that wasn't the case, but it does, it does seem that way sometimes. It does seem that way sometimes. All right, let me see. I think we just got this. And we'll probably wrap up. We're probably not going to do Discord. I think it's, there's, you know, it's been a very slow night. So we'll probably just call it after this. Oh, it's stuff getting deleted. So House passes the bill. Or I'm sorry. House passes billions for aid, ignores 20 billion to end U.S. homelessness. Speaker Johnson is just a fucking terrible human being. The U.S. House of Representatives recently approved $95.2 billion in aid for Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan, while the issue of homelessness in the United States remains unaddressed. The Department of Housing and Urban Development estimates that ending homelessness in the U.S. would cost $20 billion. Yet the House has not allocated funds for this purpose. You can't fix homelessness. So much, I can't remember what the statistic was, but so, yeah, fifth generational warfare. I can't remember what the stat is, but it's a, it's... I want to say it's more than 50% of homeless people. They're homeless by choice. They don't want to be a part of the system. They don't want a job. They don't want a license. They don't want to be beholden to somebody. They're choosing to be homeless. So the only way you actually solve homelessness then is communism. Because that would mean giving housing, giving food, giving uh, or any, I guess, all resources to homeless people when they refuse to produce for society. It's not possible. So it's just very annoying. It's very annoying. This is like basic economic stuff. And, and the number of politicians and relatively smart people in the world who don't understand like basic economics and what the uh, ramifications would be were you to just pump $20 billion into, quote, the homeless problem. It's super effing ignorant. TikTok total ban in the U.S. is now the predetermined outcome after the House forces sale of popular app. Here we go. We talked about this a while ago. It went through. So a total TikTok ban in the U.S. is now almost a certainty at the House as the House forces sale of the popular app after critics warned it was like a gun pointed at American heads. The bill that could lead to a total TikTok ban in the U.S. passed 360 to 58 with broad bipartisan support. The TikTok measure was part of a wider set of foreign and legislation. I'm sorry. Yeah, set of foreign aid legislation that the House passed Saturday afternoon being today. There are some implications with this that are also not so great. So it is unfortunate that the House of Representatives is using the cover 
of important foreign and humanitarian assistance to once again jam through a ban bill that would trample the free speech rights of 170 million Americans, devastate 7 million businesses, and shutter a platform that contributes $24 billion to the U.S. economy annually, a TikTok spokesperson told the Daily Mail. So this is the bill that we were talking about before with money going to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. This was just, you know, tossed in there at the bottom somewhere. This is the, it's the funniest thing about politics that you learn at some point is that they'll pass a bill for something and they'll put a bunch of other shit in the bill that nobody talks about, nobody reports on, and they hold all these, these votes in the afternoon on a Saturday when the media is completely shut down, basically, other than breaking news. It's evil. It's evil. Our political system is evil the way that it functions. So the TikTok ban is interesting for a couple of reasons. The first one to me is that what it seems is that it, uh, here it is, it forces TikTok's Chinese parent company ByteDance to divest from the app. If ByteDance doesn't divest from the app within a year, TikTok would get banned and we would no longer have access to TikTok. If you read, if you actually read it, there seems to be an insinuation, not an insinuation. There seems to be, a, that's a good way to put it, a sleight of hand. Literal magicians. There seems, it, there seems to be a bit of a sleight of hand in the bill. In that it would grant the U.S. government more control over social media spaces currently. So if the bill passes under the guise of getting rid of evil TikTok, which I'm all about. I'm all about it. I don't think we should. I think there should be limitations and there's some things that we could do to, to make it safe. Or, But I'm not necessarily against TikTok disappearing forever. I think it's absolute poison to the minds of adults and children alike. But it seems to be a Trojan horse that will allow them to dig their nails into X and dig their nails into other social media platforms. The interesting thing is that all of the social media platforms are already beholden to the U.S. government other than X. So it seems kind of like a sleight of hand to get in to X's business again, now that they've been completely shut out of it. I don't know who am I, but it's a bit alarming. It's a little bit alarming. Let me see if any of the rest of this is worth it or if we'll just call it an early night. The International Criminal Court is considering arrest warrants for Netanyahu. That's interesting. Not that that'll happen. I very much doubt it. The IICs, I'm sorry, the ICC scrutiny focuses on Israel's mishandling of humanitarian aid and extreme security measures during conflict. This is what I was saying. Like, I can't find good enough information on this. And I see it all the time. But I don't feel confident in anything that is happening in Gaza. It seems like they're both being completely immoral, though. I don't think either of them is in the right. And I don't think the U.S. should have anything to do with any of it. It seems just absolutely god-awful on both sides. U.S. confirms IDF strike in Iran. U.S. officials have confirmed to ABC News that the Israeli missiles hit a site in Iran. Three explosions have been reported in Iran's uh, one of its reasons, home to critical nuclear facilities that were recently shut down due to security concerns. So stuff is happening. The reports are very conflicting, which is why it's really hard to know what's going on. Failure of Israel attack confirmed? Question mark. Looks like Israel shot missiles, but they did not reach Iran. The popular mobilization forces found the remains of an Israeli missile in an area on the outskirts of Baghdad and... Uh, it has English writing on it. So there's a lot of things being asked. Somebody recognize these missile type? Can we confirm it's Israeli or American made? And then they just show some more pictures. So this says, I don't think this is Hebrew. This is English. Common use in mechanical engineering. Iranians could use English as well, I guess. So some theories going around about how much we were involved in it. I mean, I'm sure we were involved in it. We seem to be getting involved in absolutely everything. But who knows? 
no plans to withdraw U.S. troops from Iraq. Despite Baghdad's moves to end U.S. military presence, the Pentagon states there are no current plans to withdraw the 2,500 troops stationed in Iraq. Gee, I wonder why. This decision follows a U.S. drone strike in Baghdad earlier this year, which sparked government condemnation and intensified calls from Iran-aligned groups for U.S. withdrawal. I'm not aware of any plan to plan for withdrawal. We continue to remain very focused on the defeat. So they are, uh, they're going to stay there. They're going to stay there. Chicago has given $70 million to illegal immigrants. So that's great. I mean, Chicago is doing really, really well. The Chicago economy is just absolutely phenomenal. The homeless problem in Chicago has gotten really, really good. Uh, everything is very good. So it makes sense to me why they're going to give $70 million for illegal care. I love that verbiage. The uh, Chicago City Council voted to approve Mayor Brandon Johnson's request for $70 million for illegals care. Yet again, Democrats choose illegals over their hardworking taxpayers. Uh, this was funny. It's in Discord in the forum section if you want to see it. But she's not happy. She's not very happy about this. So she goes off on him a bit. And it was pretty good. But, I mean, no surprise there, right? It's Chicago. Come on. Female University of Chicago student fights off a robber by grabbing his gun as he tried stealing her phone. And then she removes the clip while fighting him, throws it away. He gets the gun back, but doesn't know what to do because the clip has been pulled. This is what I'm talking about when you can't underestimate women completely. You have to admit there are plenty of women who can do some badassery and, and stuff like this. Wildly cool. What a badass. So you see her fighting with this dude. At one point, she, she gets the clip enough. Actually, it's right, here. it's right here. It's right here. You see her get it, and then you see her throw it into the bushes. There it is. Boom. Backswing. Boom. Tosses it. Clip gone. She continues to fight with him. He gets away from her. He backs up with the gun in his hand and looks really confused. The, all the reports say that he, she said that he looked really confused because he could not fire the weapon. So obviously he didn't have one chambered already, but beautiful thing to see. Beautiful thing to see. I'm able to get my hands on the gun and remove the magazine from the gun and I toss it into the bush, Madeline recalled. What a badass. What a badass. All right, last one and then I'm going to roll. It's been a slow night. Just then, the FBI says Chinese hackers are preparing to launch an attack on U.S. infrastructure. FBI Director Chris Wray said the Chinese will have the, quote, ability to physically wreak havoc on our critical infrastructure at a time of its choosing. Ray said that the Chinese have successfully gained access to companies throughout the U.S. in energy, telecommunications, water, and have targeted 23 pipeline operators. If that doesn't make you sick to your stomach, I don't know what will. The PRC, People's Republic of China, has made it clear that it considers every sector that makes our society run as fair game in its bid to dominate the world stage and that its plan to land low blows against civilian infrastructure to try to induce panic and break America's will to resist. The statement comes just one week after Ray made this warning. It has been that in our most immediate concern has been that individuals or small groups will draw some kind of twisted inspiration from the events in the Middle East to carry out attacks here at home. But now, Increasingly concerning is the potential for a coordinated attack here in the homeland akin to the ISIS-K attack we saw at the Russia concert hall just a couple weeks ago. Our most immediate concern. I feel like every week I'm reading something about CIA or FBI saying that, you know, terrorist plots are imminent. Avoid public gatherings. China's going to hack all our stuff. It seems consistent to a point you become desensitized to it. And I worry that I'm getting there with some of this stuff, to be completely honest. That is how many weeks in a row can you say that this is happening? The funny thing, though, is that we've had some things happen, like the cell service issues, uh, servers going down, the whole medical issue that we had recently with uh, like prescriptions not being available because uh, one of the big 
I don't remember what exactly happened, but it was affecting um it was affecting essentially servers that allowed prescription the pharmacies to communicate with medical providers. There we go. I don't know why I had such a hard time saying that. So there was an issue there. And so for I think more than a day, people were not able to get prescriptions. But think of like the implications of that. You think about it on like your personal life level, you're like, yeah, who cares? I'll survive a day without my prescription. Okay. Not everybody will. <laughs> not everybody will. And it, it, for certain things, it, the implications are relatively rough. If you actually think about them. I think that's rhetor I think that's rhetorical point. They want us to sense it. Exactly. That's my point. Yeah. Is I, I at a point you're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. China bad. China bad. Russia bad. They're gonna hack us. We're gonna lose the grid. You know, we're not gonna have clean water. I get it, I get it, I get it. But in actuality, like that's terrifying. This this set of words is terrifying. And it's also probably true that the Chinese have successfully gained access to companies throughout the U.S. Energy, telecommunications, and water. If you took control of energy, telecommunications, and water, we're done. We're done. Even if you could affect to 20% in, an, in a negative sense, energy, telecommunications, and water, we have a massive problem. The U.S. has a massive problems, and a lot of people will die very quickly. It's a big problem. It's honestly very terrifying. I feel like I have to renew my fear on a constant basis so I don't become desensitized because I am. Totally am. Mikel's getting there too, I guess. It's wild, man. It's wild stuff. So I actually, all right, this, this will be it. This will be it because I want you all to see this. So this first chart here, this is the consumer price index for all urban consumers. This is all items in U.S. city average. Pretty massive rise, right? So we're talking about a thousand, about fifteen hundred percent. Here you have consumer price index again for all urban consumers. This is your purchasing power. Isn't it interesting how that worked? So on this chart. We're talking about 100% down. So your purchasing power as an American citizen is down almost 100% from 1913. This is the United States interest rate. It doesn't look super bad, but it is if you look at the dates. So here we're talking 2006, which was right before the financial collapse. Back here, we're talking about 80 and 81 from basically 79 to 81. It was not good news for the economy. And we all know, we, we have all been alive enough to understand at least some what happened in 2008. I think most people understand pretty well what happened in 2008. It's not good. And we're peaking that. We're above it. It's not good. It's very, very bad. All of these spending bills are eventually going to bite us in the ass. And I just, I am very concerned about a recession in the next year or two. I'm very concerned and everyone's calling me crazy, but I feel very confident in this. My point is save money, guys. Save money, buy assets, hard assets, buy things that appreciate. Don't hang on to cash because it is less valuable every day that you hold on to it. Buy valuable stuff, man. Assets, assets, assets. Shit, we can't keep the house of cards up forever. Eventually, something's going to break, at least a little bit. Um, I am out. I'm out. I got some stuff that we didn't go over, but I'll, I'll save it till next week. Tonight was very slow. So I'll save those for next week. If you haven't voted on the poll for movie night, come in here and do that. This closes tomorrow sometime. So far, it's CIA by a pretty wide margin. So even if you vote, actually, it's probably not going to matter. But, you know, democracy and whatnot. So if you haven't voted and you want to go, go, uh, go do that. And then I will post something for Thursday, a poll for Thursday, so we can get that all figured out. And then Sunday we'll do, uh, we'll do Bible study like normal for anybody who is interested. Bye, friends. Have a good rest of your weekend. You too, Nat. All right.
Y'all have a good night. Love you guys.